we are live. Hi everyone and welcome back to Let's Chat Money. This is the first one for 2024 and I've got the wonderful Gethin Hill with me here this week. Thank you very much for joining um, and it's great to obviously we're in 2024, it's a new year, what we're midway midway through no we're at the end of january that says it all because yes. i don't know about you but this year's been a little bit or this month has been a bit weird i don't know how you felt about it yeah it's it's gone super fast and to be honest i actually don't know what month we're in like i feel like that um so yeah i i feel exactly the same been stuck in that Christmas bubble a little bit. And a lot of people are saying yeah. that actually, that it's being a really, really weird month. But then with it being so dark and dreary, it's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Obviously, we are here today to talk about money, which hence the title. And the whole reason of this is to try and create some open money conversations and to just yeah. get us talking about money in general and how we're feeling about it. But before we go on to that, can you tell us a bit about yourself and what you do? And I know you also have your own YouTube channel. So can you let us know about that as well, please? Yeah. So what do I do? <laughs> Good question. Um, so... In terms of like my online stuff, uh, I help entrepreneurs to to start, launch, and grow their business. Um, it's we help them with strategy and systems, really, to, to get the the right strategies, the right systems, the right foundations in place, so they can actually start and grow uh, and actually make consistent consistent income. So we typically tend to operate um, between like I'd say zero and six figures, really, in terms of clients um and getting them through that growth phase um YouTube channel yeah that's like do you know what that's super new something i've wanted to do for such a long time um and it's really actually part of my personal brand more than anything i do you know post some value on there i do post stuff about strategy but it's going to be really focused on my personal brand um talking about who i am as a, as a not just as an entrepreneur but as a dad um as i guess a family man and and kind of shining light i think one of my biggest passions i'm going to go on a rant here right because i just love this that's fine <laughs> my biggest my biggest thing in life is that i i get very frustrated i get quite triggered right when um people limit themselves yeah. um because i just believe i i often believe in people more than they believe in themselves um and i want to kind of re re reduce those barriers you know remove those barriers uh, especially when it comes to people like myself parents people who who have like larger missions mission driven people um so yeah that's like you can see <laughs> hopefully you can see what i'm about but um that's a, i love I that because it is and what i love about what you do and because obviously i'm connected with you on facebook um I love how open you are about being a business dad because we obviously see the working mums and myself, you know, I'm a mum, I'm a son mum, you know, my, my eldest has um, cerebral palsy and potentially ADHD. My youngest, I'm convinced, is ADHD. And it is really hard juggling business and being a parent, isn't it? And we, we see it a lot from the mother's perspective. But what I really like is because you share quite a lot from your perspective as well. And it's really interesting and nice to yeah. see your journey and how you support people with that too. Yeah, I, I do try because I think it is important that there is a dad's, not a dad's, a kind of a dad's movement, but I am about parents in general. Like I mentioned before, that before we went live, all of my clients are, are female. Um, but the, the dad journey and the mum journey is very different. Yes. Um, and there are different, different obstacles, different factors. And I think that's something that people have to understand. Um, but again, we all have our challenges, you know, it might be as a mum, it's balancing career and family and maybe your husband works or something and he's, and he's like out, out of the house, you know? So then you have to juggle the kids and the business at the same time. You know, it might be something like That's that. Me. Versus, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So I'm I'm super involved. Like, like I mentioned, you know, I, I'm sat in my car now because I, I drop my daughter off to preschool at 9.15 and I wait and then I pick her up at 11.45. Um, so I, you know, I do all that stuff uh, whilst my, my wife is at home. But I'm... I'm quite fortunate, you know, my wife is at home. My daughter is in full-time um, kind of preschool and nursery, really. So it's very different challenges. 
um but i just try and be open about that and try and share mm. you know what my experience is as a parent and trying to do something in this world you know yeah it shows that you can also utilize all your time like you say you've dropped your daughter off to preschool and although you you know you've got to pick her up quite soon after that you're still doing bits like now this show in the car there's ways you can do it even on the go yeah. which might not be quite as effective in the office but actually you can still run your business and grow your business as well can't you so it's just utilizing yes. Yes. the way that you're doing things so it actually works for you um, because like you said, we are sometimes our own worst enemies and we do sometimes hold ourselves back. So it's getting that balance to pushing forward and making your business work around your life, isn't it? Hundred percent, yeah, because we, we all have different lives, different factors, different challenges and things that we're juggling and we all look, our our lives look different. Um but there is a way, regardless of, of what your life is, there is a way to get the stuff done that you need to do. I think part of that is is being realistic in a way like if you only have a few hours a day to work on the business or two hours a day then make sure your goals are realistic to that you know you might move slower and that's fine but you will still move forward in his ways you know i have, I have a client who's a mum of three send mum of three and has you know she does like two hours she earlier this year uh, last year sorry she was doing two hour journeys to drop the child to drop her kids off to school and then two hours back like her days were insane but she still found the time like she's probably one of the strongest women that i know um and like a huge inspiration for me to be honest i look at her and i'm like i ain't got nothing to moan about <laughs> do, you know, do you know what i mean i think it's a great perspective um so there is always a way you just have to find yeah. it and that, and the ways look different for everyone yeah comparisonitis is the worst thing in this isn't it because we look at those who are shouting out online about how they're doing all of this but then quite often when you look they probably don't have children or there's their situation just so <laughs> thing in your own lane isn't it and getting away from all 100%. of that noise and going okay this is my reality and this is how I can make it work for me and sticking on what is is your life and I know I've been you yeah. know I've been you got sucked up in that a little bit a few years ago um and it is easy to do and it it's also the excitement that goes alongside it but then it's going actually know what is it that i need to do to make this work for me and not be so mm. strung up with all those people going oh i'm you know making seven figures in a month because it's usually not true and you know it's their life is probably so different uh, to the way that we're doing it too yeah 100 percent, and it's different priorities right and that, that's fine um if there is people who choose to not have families and that's absolutely fine and that's you know their way of, of living their life um but you know when you've got a 22 year old and i i've i've had mentors who are like 22 23 very very successful men but they're single and no children no responsibilities um and that's cool because you know when i was 22 that was me yeah um but you could it's very easy to look at maybe somebody like that and be like well you know this person's doing seven figures they grew it in 12 months they did this and they did that but like you can't you can't compare this you know it's two different very different people different lifestyles different time um it's dangerous you know yeah yeah there's a lot of people who they devalue their own worth because of it isn't there yeah. it's yeah like you say it can be dangerous so it's definitely stay in your own lane so 100%. let's get on to the money question then obviously i sent these to you in advance because i don't like to just spring it upon people um yeah and I like to give people a bit of time to think about what they're going to say sometimes. So first one, how is it? How do you feel about money? Um, so I actually didn't. I did scan, but I didn't like dive. <laughs> in, I, I did. I didn't dive into the questions. because I, I thought, OK, yeah, we'll just didn't do your open. homework. <laughs> no, because I just thought, you know, we'll have an open conversation. Um, yes. And I thought, yeah, let's let's do it. You know, so how do I feel about money? I'll be completely honest, like I'm in the middle uh when it comes to my actual feelings about money um i have come from a place where i ha where i unconsciously feared it like you know i uncon i didn't know but i didn't i feared it um had very poor financial education growing up um i wasn't taught how to manage money um i earned really good money actually from the age of 16 so I, and it ended up uh, i ended up i was a professional footballer um and didn't know how to manage money um which is a bad combination <laughs> um i ended up into like 20 30 000 pounds worth of debt in uh, by the age of like 21 
um, with like credit cards and loans and stuff where I lost contracts in football and had no income and loads of outgoings. Um, and I'm looking back, like I feared it, you know, I almost tried to outspend what I spent, what I earned because maybe I was uncomfortable having money, like self-worth maybe. Um, but I'm kind of, I've been working on that now for the last 10 years. And I think now I'm in a place where I'm learning to own it. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but I'm super conscious now of how I feel about it. And I know that I have like these underlying habits like kind of cycles that are in my mind of i don't know maybe it's you know a little bit of self-worth thinking like you know from like my, my upbringing stuff like that and those things you know those things don't go away you just learn how to deal with them and overcome them um so that's a very long-winded answer isn't it but no it's an interesting a answer. large part of me sorry carry on well no it's just i think where i'm where i'm at with it at this moment in time is probably i'd call it like the growth phase yeah you know where i've understood why i've had money you know back when i was 20 21 like 10 years ago now well no nine years ago now um why i caused myself to issue, self issues yeah. and why i got myself into shit. <laughs> you know? i think <laughs> i was asked in um, one of my groups yesterday um is it scary or how do people with too much money feel? And it very much goes back to when you did your footballing. So I didn't know that about you. And to what we are taught when we're younger, because we're not taught financial literacy in schools yes. and we're not taught how to handle money. We get taught all of these, you know, how to do algebra, how to do all these things we don't really use in life. You know, I run an, an accountancy firm and we don't, you know, you don't use a huge amount of maths in it. Now you've got so much technology around you. I don't sit and do algebraic equations. It's that simple, really. Um, and there's a lot we're taught in school that we don't necessarily utilize in adult life. And the basic life skills like financial education, we're not taught enough of, or if not any, like you, yeah. I was taught these things at school. I remember having politics days, but I don't remember <laughs> sitting down and learning about money. Those were the days I survived no. at school. I shouldn't admit that, but I didn't go to politics. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to stay home. Um, I should not admit that, should I? But I actually said, yeah, it can be just as detrimental to have too much money as not having enough money. Because like what you said, when you come from no money and then you're suddenly given lots, you don't know mm. what to do with it. And this is why no. you see people who win the lottery and they blow it in a year or two or they end up in tons of debt because people yeah. don't know, one, what to do with it, to create future wealth, how to invest it, how to look after it. They don't understand usually the tax side of things. And mm -hmm. sometimes it is overwhelming and it can be really scary having too much. And it's like, well, what do you do with it? So people give it away. And it is interesting yeah. how it it plays on the mindset side um and what you were saying it's nice to hear how you have seen your own growth and how you're changing it because you're being really conscious about it because the yeah. way we handle money is very subconscious and it is things that we have heard we've been taught um and that growing up and sometimes we don't realize our habits until someone goes mm. well why are you doing that or until you sit and you actually go well what am i doing how am i spending and actually you take action to change that it's all the money psychology um and it's really yeah. fascinating so yeah thank you for sharing that yeah so it is of, oh sorry oh no i, I agree like i i think la <clears throat> a large part of my miseducation miseducation lack of education um would also come from my parents as well yeah. um you know and I, i'm i'm extremely open with them um you know money doesn't grow money doesn't grow on trees um they spent they they normalized credit um yes. you know certain things that they would say around money that you know we, we money was always a negative it was always seen it, it, it was always a problem as opposed to a positive if that makes sense yeah, yeah. Um, and that definitely instilled a lot of subconscious fear that i that i kind of latched on to mm. um growing up which would have resulted in me doing what I did. But yeah, a lot of that school definitely helps. But my personal experience was a lot of that came from there. Yeah. Yeah. It's a generational cycle, isn't it? Yeah. 
but also the way we handle money now is so so different to what we did even 20 years ago we're so digital now um and finances have changed because of that and mm. it is something that you need to keep on top of continuously isn't it because it is all changing and I know a lot of people um what I've heard recently are trying to go back to cash because obviously cash is kind of disappearing but people are trying to go back to that whether it will happen I don't know I don't <laughs> think with this digital age if I'm honest with you but it's, it yeah. is yeah and the way I think money is being seen is when we were growing up it was very much you go to work you do the nine to five if you don't have a really good job like a high-end solicitor or something then you're going to fail at life um mm. because that, that's the people that make all the money whereas now it's we're in such a digital age it's actually you don't have to work like you were saying with what you do you don't have to work all the hours you don't have to be going to the office nine to five and it's a laptop lifestyle isn't it it's so so different and we've got more yeah. opportunities now too so when we teach our children and then we've learned from these things that we didn't get taught growing up it's going to change the next generation and cycle again with what they go through yeah yeah definitely and like money you know the money doesn't grow on trees thing like it does like i'm sorry but it literally does if that's one thing <laughs> that I've learned, it literally does it, it oh, literally does grow um <laughs> maybe not on literal trees but it prints every day yeah. like the amount of money i don't know the exact figure but the amount of money that, ex that, is, that exchanges hands in tra transactional every single day is like i think it's trillions of pounds every single day is exchanged in the world like so much out. <laughs> yeah and i think when you so much out there. when you understand that you can go and print money essentially like long story short obviously then your perspective change on it. I changes on it. I I I don't teach this. I talk about this in some of my conversations about your financial thermostat. You know how we we operate like um, like a thermometer. You know in the house when you turn your heating on, when the heating when the temperature drops too low, it turns on and kicks you back up. It's, the money yeah. is the same in, in terms of our spending habits. Is that when our whatever we we have a thermometer and we have a lower end and a higher end. When our lower end when we, when we hit our, our lower end, we get, get into gear, anxiety, action, and we're like, oh, I'm short now, I need to stop spending and hold and save. Mm -hmm. When we hit the top end of our thermometer where we're comfortable with how much money we have in our bank account, we spend. Yeah. You know, um, and that's something that, that's probably helped in my education of, of trying to increase that thermometer yeah. um, so that I'm not uncomfortable when I have too much money, like you said, you know. So otherwise you just spend yeah. it <laughs> it's definitely your comfort zone was on both areas but it's also when you get to yeah. that top end knowing what to do with that money when you got there so you don't end up yeah, blowing sure. it end up down the bottom end again so when you get yeah. up there when you look at your investments your savings and actually putting it into pots so you actually create future wealth not just you but generational mm -hmm. wealth for your children as well because then when you do that it changes it all entirely because you have this top end pot but then you're actually distributing it into areas. So it's not all just sat yeah. there, one lump sum growing, growing, growing. So yeah, it's definitely, it's interesting, isn't it? Well, obviously it is. it goes about. <laughs> yeah. So what would you do if you won the lottery? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> the, 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 the hurt child inside of me says buy a Lamborghini. Um, <laughs> 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 uh, that's just, what um, colour would it be? <laughs> It would be probably, it'd probably be purple. I, it's already, it's you know, I I already know the the one. Um, I think you know we we all um think about scenarios, don't we? Um, but depends on how much, you know. It really, really does. Um, if it's a it's a million, if you want a million, like doesn't, it's not going to last very long. Yeah. Um, that's the I think people think that you know retire off a million. Someone said the other day, fucking good job, good luck um especially if especially if you're in your 20s and 30s and you've got another 40 years to go like um yeah you could invest and get a good return but you're not gonna live an extravagant lifestyle um what would i do if i won the lottery so i would take care of a couple of normal things um i would i would ask my wife i would i would take care of my wife first in terms of anything that she wanted i know she would say holidays so we'd probably book some holidays um i would take care of my parents first um my dad does still work um and that's a goal of mine over the next couple of years is to, to to remove him from that um but actually i wouldn't do much more 
with that, I would actually speed things up. Mm-hmm. Um, try and have a lot of plans, a lot of um, a lot of goals that are in the pipeline, business wise. Um, and a large portion of that would would go into investments inside the business. So hiring teams. Um, you know, I've got um, plans in place now later this year to put to buy a uh, to buy a nursery. Um, it would speed things like that up. Mm-hmm. Um, it would speed it would speed things up. You know, yes, there'd probably be some purchases depending on the amount. Just full transparency. <laughs> just, yeah. So I I have a couple of things. There, there are there are things I spend my money on no three things I spent my money on even now um and that's a car I like I spend a lot of time in my car I travel um which means I'd like to have nice cars um house and holidays yeah they're the three things I like spending money on I actually don't value spending money on much and many other things oh sorry coffee <laughs> Star- Starbucks Starbucks genuinely Starbucks has a, a place in my monthly budget yeah like je- deadly serious i'm not even lying you um, have to you do have to make sure you i class that as self-care yeah it's just, it's just little things i enjoy but um things i don't value spending money on clothes mm-hmm. um little, there, there are other things i can't think of off the top of my head so there's you know i'm not a super extra extravagant extravagant person the more yes. money i've earned i haven't i've i hardly buy myself clothes my wife right my wife I don't know if I should share this, but my <laughs> wife had to force me to buy new boxes because I'm just like I don't like I don't but I don't spend money on clothes. Yeah, I just it's not in my thought process. Um, yeah. You'd rather get a new car and, than ah oh, all day. Like yes. I'm I'm turning I'm turning thirty ne- um in next January and I have my next purchase in line because that's what's a priority for me, yeah. um rightly or wrongly, but hopefully that did i answer the question do you know what i could just go i could just talk and talk and talk you're not the only one don't worry it's fine (laughs) so with that in mind what was the best investment you ever made then Ooh. this is a tricky one i think sometimes because i actually don't know how i'd answer this i have a controversial one okay i do um the, fir- the first one, there isn't really a business investment that I've made and I've, and I've said that changed the game. Yeah. Like I've, I've, I've invested a lot of money um, in business and I've taken little bits away from different things, mm. you know? So I don't think I've ever really made an investment. I was like, that changed, the, that changed the game for me. That was, yes. that was insane. There was one community that I joined back in COVID, uh, which was a, by a friend of mine, um, called D, D Ludlow. Um, and he started a club called the 5am club. Mm-hmm. And we, I was one of the, like, it was about, about a group of five or six of us on there in COVID to keep each other going, basically, because we'd gone from, you know, busy days to, to nothing. And we woke up at five o'clock twice a week on the call and just talked about business and stuff like that. That was the thing that being involved in that community even though it was free i think if i remember rightly for the first like six months then he monetized it on, and it's really big now um it got me in the right circles and it got me probably where i am today that is a bit of a caveat set me on a path um but the best investment that i've made is a personal one yeah um and that is in my daughter's childcare. yeah um <laughs> twofold because one her development she's been in nurseries full-time since nine months old Mm -hmm. um her development is insane she's such an intelligent child and i put that down to the 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 nursery Mm -hmm. um because i think they did a much better job than we ever would have done (laughs) um she's she's an incredible little girl um but i see that as an investment in my business as well because i've been able to work my business full-time for the last three years um instead of yeah. trying to juggle now that like that can be controversial i fully i fully understand that um but if i had to do it again i would because even if i if i had 500 quid a month to invest in my business as i just put some per figure out there instead of investing in a business coach i would invest in my daughter's nursery mm. I think that's really interesting, actually, because obviously both my children went to nursery and preschool. So my eldest son, um, he ended up like your daughter in 
nursery from I think about eight months old and I was working full time yeah. at the time I had to do that as a single mum I had to do it to be able to work so I would drop them yeah. off at like seven in the morning and I'd pick them up at six and that was what I had to do to pay the bills um you know and so I could feed him at the end of the day and then when I had my second son obviously I was with my husband it was a very different re- um, situation relationship and he well we moved so when we, we bought our house and when we moved to there were no nurseries like there's preschools from the age of mm. two two and a half but no nurseries yeah. and so I was home with him full time um well I was on sabbatical leave actually it's a bit more complicated I was on sabbatical leave to care for my elder son because he was going for a major operation to help him walk he's got cerebral palsy and yes. um so I was on sabbatical leave so I was fortunate to be able to be home with him and gosh, I would go on walks daily. We'd do flashcards. We'd do so much. And I remember because he's got so much energy. And like your daughter, he, I mean, my eldest son switched on as well, but my youngest was just so, so switched on. In a lot of ways, I couldn't keep up with him because it was, yeah. we aren't taught how to teach children like that, are we? Unless you go to, no. and you are actually a teacher, you're not taught how to do that. And I actually remember because he, not. I'm convinced he's got ADHD and he is very, very clingy, bless him. Love him to bits, but he's a mummy's boy. Um, I would be cooking and he'd literally be holding onto my leg. I couldn't move Mm. without him there. And I remember going and looking around the preschool just before he was two. And I was like, he really needs to come here. And they were like, oh, well, he's not sweet till he's two. And I was like, no, 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 you're not hearing me. He really needs to come. I was like, I need to be able to actually have a break and do things do something yeah do something because mentally I was just going insane I was like but he also needs that interaction with other children and he needs 100% and so he ended up he did they took him on a few months early thankfully um after I finished begging them <laughs> and um, <laughs> he, and I definitely like my eldest son if it wasn't for the nursery and then he went to a preschool so I when he got a bit older I swapped it up so two days he would go to a preschool the rest of the week a nursery same one he went to he learned so much there and my youngest learned so much there yeah it's not just an investment for us to run the business or to go to work it's an investment for them for when they get to school and do yes things. definitely because they were so advanced and ready for school when they got there which is something I probably wouldn't have been able to do like you having them like with mm. them at home I wouldn't have had a clue what to do no, well, we're not like I think this this that that whole topic needs to be normalised in parenting because I feel like online online is a savage place like it's a oh, it's yeah. a bad place right, <laughs> um, and you'll have some parents from my experience who are like oh I you know I I'm with my parent with my children full time I'm like well that's great but like like you said we're not experts in like in raising children really are we because the first time you have a child is when the when you have a child you've yeah. never done it before <laughs> I was not, um, 19 you know I was 20 when I had my son um yeah. and I was a single mum and I mean I wasn't you know now I look back and I mean obviously he's coming up well, he's 10 and he'll be 11 this year and I look back and go I was so young so young mm. and I hadn't even lived my life I mean, you know I'd left yeah. school at the age of 15, I was working in a bank full time and I dropped out of college because that's what I was encouraged, encouraged to do. And then, you know, so I'd, what have I done? I'd left school. I'd done college for a year, dropped out, worked full time. And then I was having a baby and never being yes. taught what to do with children. And that it's uh, never being around babies. So I had no clue. <laughs> <laughs> We're not. And like we only we only learn how to navigate life most of the time after when we get to a certain age and through lived experience right and if we we have children before we learn or if we we if we're responsible solely for for developing our children which of course we have to play we play a large part and large role in that but if it's only us what if we're broke Mm. like we're not then raising the our children in the right way and i fully stand by like my the nursery was has been incredible the school now the preschool is incredible um and my daughter just loves it. And and then we're, we're, she comes home to us. We have our family time. We, we're there for the love and support. And she she picks up things from me. Like, she loves working. She said, Daddy, I'm just going to do some work. And I'm like, okay, babe. She just has a little pretend laptop. She's quite funny. Um, but, yeah, I, I like, that's been my biggest my biggest and best investment, you know. It's, it's, it's um not just like you said, not just for the business, yes, for the business, but also for her as well. Um, so it's kind of us really as a family. Yeah. 
you know it's definitely a whole nother conversation in it isn't it because i do <laughs> know, really, like you know anyone who says about cost i get it because when my eldest son was in nursery full time it cost me over a thousand pounds a month and it's expensive yeah. but it also is, yeah. the lady um who used to look after him called bev like she she wasn't just a nursery person she you know for jay she was so much more and actually she supported me mm. through so much and i think this is a thing that as well it's not always just the children like bev supported me with so much with jay so when he went through his disability diagnosis um and all the rest of it because that's a whole nother conversation which would take ages because he wasn't mm. just diagnosed with cerebral palsy there was an alternative diagnosis from the mri which basically we didn't know how long he would have to live and it wasn't actually till he was five that we finally actually had the diagnosis of cerebral palsy and i found i got called by his pediatrician at work and obviously i just broke down um and she was there for me so and supported me through all that because she'd worked with a lot of special needs children. So she had that experience to help pull me through it. And mm -hmm. I think sometimes when we send our children to nursery and preschool as well, it's not always just for the children. It's another support there for parents where you can yeah, go, sure. well, what do I do? What do, what do I need to? But yeah, it Absolutely. does. There is also the cost. It's so, so expensive. But it is then, like you say, it's going, okay, actually, it's an investment not into their future, isn't it, too? So that's a really interesting. Yeah, one. 100%. Yeah. Um, and I think it kind, of, it kind of ties back to what we said at the start, right, in terms of, like, finding a way to make things happen um you know all right yeah of course full-time nursery like may not be something that uh, maybe some people or a lot you know other people can afford i don't know but if someone is maybe sat there if i was sat at home potentially doing you know having to be a full-time parent because of finances were not in the right place maybe then what if you know instead of looking at a business coach or you know investing in some sort of business course which might be 50 pound a month mm. right 50 pound a month or 100 pound a month or something whatever it might be or i spend 50 pound a month in starbucks or i spend whatever it is on my phone bill 150 quid on my phone bill i'd be thinking right well okay let, let, let let's see if i can afford half a day a week yeah and then a the half a day a week i've got four hours to just be bam 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 get it done and then let's see what comes see what comes of it you know yeah. and that's 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 a starting point it's a starting block um and it's just figuring out like you know goes back to what we said at the start figuring out how just to take one step forward how can i do that not try and keep up with someone who who was someone else just for me yeah. um but again that's a i think that's a whole different <laughs> conversation again <laughs> <laughs> i would you know. love to know what anyone watching this what your views are on this because I, I get both sides of it because I know when my eldest went to nursery full time, I did have a lot of regret that actually I wasn't home with him. Oh, I wasn't able mm -hmm. to be home with him. And I'll always be glad that I had that with my second son. But then it is also, I it is that point of when I went, actually, no, I really need to. He needs to go and have that education. So, and I know it's very, it's very, it can be a very controversial subject, can't it? Um, so it's, I'd love to know what other people think as well on your views. And there is no, I don't actually believe there is any right or wrong answer to this because it is your own mm. feelings and how you want to do things. But obviously as an entrepreneur, I mean, when my youngest went to preschool, it wasn't that long after then COVID hit. <laughs> so then I was trying to run a business with the children home. And I remember how hard yeah. it was. I was having Zoom calls, which was all quite new again, suddenly going into the Zoom world, trying to figure out Zoom with my youngest sat on my lap. And it's, it was a yeah. whole different world. So it'd be interesting to know what people watching this, what you think um, on this one. And again, there's no right or wrong answer. It's whatever works for you at the end of the day. So, but yeah, it's definitely nice to consider it as an investment rather than a really expensive cost. I like that. Yeah, reframe. definitely. I have to do that reframe on myself, I think, because I do look back. <laughs> <laughs> it's so expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i like i just try i try as best as i can even like in my in my coaching and my my entrepreneurial stuff like i try to be as neutral as i possibly can like yeah. that is that 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 has to try and be the goal you know and i get that what i think you mentioned there about the guilt right about sending them to to school i get that as well like you know i i, I could say right you know we, she could be here with me now and we could be going having fun but it's like okay let's look at that neutrally what is actually if i was a neutral from the outside with no feelings what is actually the best for both parties and yes. then you make it then you make your decision based on that whatever that decision ends up being i think that's mm -hmm. kind of a decision matrix i try and apply to things because we'd all love to just be like fuck it 
just let's just have family time all day every day we've got loads of money coming in like we don't need to work ever because you know but we also need to do certain things and we also need a break too we love our kids to bits but yes. we also need a break and yes. we play a lot at, at my house we play a lot of card <laughs> games board games and yeah. there are so many you can do only so many you can do in a day before you start going stir crazy <laughs> <laughs> yeah 100 oh bless them um, breaks are great where can people find you Gethin, on on the online world where can they find you um good question uh instagram and facebook really would be the ones um mm-hmm. get if you search get in hill you'll find me you'll i'll come up somewhere um the business dad on youtube is also a place to find me if you want to learn more about business strategy systems um on entrepreneurial stuff in general to be honest i'll be doc i'll be documenting a lot this year doc it's all about documenting and showing the path that's what i want to do so there will be lots on there. <laughs> and then you'll be able to get your Lamborghini next year. <laughs> or when you're thirsty. No, the, <laughs> no just, just the Porsche next year. The Porsche, okay. <laughs> well, I'll look at um, that then. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, in all seriousness, yeah, if they just want um, to find me there, then that's great. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I'm going to go and actually have a look at your YouTube, at your YouTube myself because I had a little snoop and it does look really, really good. Um, and I think it's great that you're doing this because we don't we see again so much online but we don't see the truth of the journeys quite often and we don't see the truth behind the entrepreneurial journey so it's great you are documenting that Mm -hmm. and obviously in the way that you're doing it as well so i'm going to go and have a watch and anyone else listening to this go and have a watch as well um because i think it's it's nice to see it from an honest perspective yeah the document the documenting stuff is coming out this month so i've got um got the first one that will be released soon um, there's some there's loads of tips and stuff on there though for now but yeah just go and subscribe and then you'll see it come out <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you ever so much for, for coming sure on much. um we will end this here because we've actually run over but thank you to everyone who has been cool. watching and yeah thank you ever so much and i'll catch you up next time thanks yeah